They say that the definition of madness is doing the same thing over and over, expecting the results to turn out different. But I'd say there's another way to define insanity, and it looks like this. I'm Graham Irwin, I'm 23 years old, I'm from Northern Ireland and uh, I ride for Heads and All Threads Suzuki. I broke four bones in my neck, uh, lucky to be alive, broke my collarbones, you know, had wrist operations, shoulder operations from you know, dislocating them and broke my leg, <laughs> the list goes on. I think the moment that I do crash and do hurt myself and think, oh, you know, maybe that's the, this is the time, I think it's the day that I should hang the boots up, but until then, I'm full gas. <laughs> to be honest, there was almost no chance of little old me being able to live with Graham and his mad Suzuki motocross bike at a place like this, the Sweet Lamb Rally Centre in the middle of Wales. But then on the other hand, I did have one of these to take him on with. The aerial nomad can be described as the atom's very mucky brother, and in this specification it has all the off-road toys to play with, from its ultra nobly BF Goodridge tyres to a full brace of lights above your head, and it even has a winch to haul you back out of the undergrowth at the front. Its suspension has been completely redesigned to allow way more travel than in any normal road car, and everything has been beefed up to enable the nomad to do what its name suggests it can, to go anywhere. The engine is a 2.4 litre Ford that's been lifted straight out of an American spec on Pacific, and it produces 240 bhp. All up, the Nomad weighs less than 700 kilograms, so in a straight line it has a decent level of energy. And as you can see, there's also a windscreen to hide behind if you're idiotic enough to try and chase someone who's running a motocross bike five feet in front of your face. Uh, we started about four and a half, five years ago probably with the basic idea and thought we are always like a gap in the market and there isn't really anything like this until now. You can obviously see and identify that it is from an Atom, but what's different? Obviously the, the, there's huge amounts of suspension travel. I mean, just, just, just show how much this travels. Well, there's, there's an, a very initial plushness <laughs> To the suspension, and you can see I'm just using one hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's, awesome. that's for when you're riding around on the road, and that sorts out all the kind of the smaller corrugations. Yeah. And then when you start to hit bigger, when you hit bigger stuff, it goes on to the main spring. Right. Um, particularly something particularly special about these dampers is the Olin's damper, and these have got a hydraulic bump stop. So that's like a damper within a damper. So when you get to a certain point in the travel the compression ramps up, I think it's five or six times. And so in theory, you're never going to get a so full you should, half stop so you against should the never, you should, so you should, Unless you're doing like a... Yeah, yeah, know, unless you're throwing it off proper, a cliff. Yeah. Proper jump, you're not going to bottom them out. So they just get harder and harder towards the bottom. I mean, this has to be as quick as... I don't know, I'd, you, I'd kind of rate its chances against an F2 rally car, for yeah. example. Yeah, that's, I would have thought, well, it's, it's so much quicker in straight it's, line. It's a very similar sort of thing, so obviously F2s are all two-wheel drive, two-litre, normally aspirated. So it would be hanging around the same horsepower and, and torque, but just with a much lower weight figure. Yeah, and 50 grand rather than 500 grand. Exactly, <laughs> so quite attainable. This is a 450. Suzuki um, an RMZ 450. You're looking at about probably 56 to, to just under 60 horsepower. Probably running motocross skiing, you'll do probably just over 100 mile an hour. And normally we would ride on on mud or sand. Um, you know, the other time obviously you get the stones in the in the ground, but you know this is this is totally new for me. You're in total control. You're on it on your own. There's no cage around you. There's nothing you. There's nothing from protecting you. You know it's a sport I love. Um, the adrenaline 
you know, the, the buzz that I get out of it. It's just, there's nothing that can replace it. Wow, this has to be the ultimate toy. 50,000 quid might sound like an awful lot of money for a toy, but <laughs> this is just bloody marvellous. Instant lovely steering. Of course, you'd expect that. <laughs> proper jump, proper sideways. Even though it's got these knobblies on, there ain't that much grip. And the thing is, if you go offline, that, that grip just goes immediately like, like there, for example. Oh, have to love doing this. It's just outrageous. Outrageous, this thing is. It's nowhere near as outrageous as that bloody bike, though. Because what he's doing is just stupid. That is some proper talented lad. So I'm not going to talk much here because it's pretty obvious what's going on. But basically, this is what happens when a very talented lunatic on a 60 horsepower motocross bike tries to follow a 240 bhp, 50 grand nomad across a dusty Welsh rally stage. sideways everywhere. I mean it's very very fast. So compared with that bike this thing is I'm afraid it's it's kind of nowhere. Mind you the bike has just gone round here faster than Marcus Gronholm went round here in a WRC car. That is how fast that motocross bike is. And that was the pre previously that was the outright lap record for this little circuit. Marcus Gronholm in a WRC car. The motocross bike's just gone nearly two seconds faster than that. So you can't really, you can't really complain at the Nomad for not really getting anywhere near the motocross bike. But what you can say about the Nomad, it is just a total, a complete riot on four wheels. I love the fact that they built this thing in the first place because this is as much fun as you can have on four wheels, without question. Forget LaFerraris and McLarens. If you've got lots of money and you want to have maximum pure fun on four wheels, get one of these. Or better still, drop a couple of wheels and get one of those. So in the end, yes, the bike completely destroyed the car around the stage. But to be perfectly honest, this was one of those days on which there were no losers. No one crashed, no metal got bent, no pride was dented. Instead, we just had a right laugh all day long, basically, on two wheels and on four. And that is what being a petrolhead is all about. <laughs>